Hello and welcome to Collector's Impact. I'm DK and today we're back in the field of hopes and dreams this time because it kind of looks like a Hyrule field. So it's very in theme with our conversation today. Now, um, for any of you that are fans of The Legend of Zelda, you may know or you may not know, but in the year 2007, there was a product that was released that was booster boxes of the special cards uh, commemorating Twilight Princess. So Twilight Princess came out in 2006. It was released in November of that year, I believe, right alongside the Wii when that came out. And a few months after that, they put these booster boxes in the stores. And I, I remember specifically, I was at like GameStop and they had some loose packs. So I bought a few and I was like, oh, these are, these are pretty nice. So I went and bought um, two, two entire boxes of them. And then I bought a few of the singles that I was missing after opening those two boxes. And I completed the set and I have one of the special cards in the back that I'll, I'll be glad to show you. So these cards, they're kind of, you know, unique. They're, they're pretty, th this is more of a, like a relaxing video. Just chill and, and have a look at these random old cards. And if you're a fan of The Legend of Zelda, you might actually like a few of these and want to pick some up for yourself. So let's go ahead and get into it. So these, we'll start with the base set, which is, it consists of 50 cards. So of course, uh, the first card is Link. And then you get into Midna. It's all mostly the, the main characters. Princess Zelda, of course. Then you get into some of the side characters. And it kind of progresses from there. So I'll just, uh, I'll just flip through these so you guys can see. So if any of these are any of your favorite characters or whatnot, you know, I'm sure you can find the singles online on eBay or whatever if you wanted to pick a couple up. Otherwise, um... It's actually, I mean, it's a really nice set to have in its completion. I went ahead and, and penny sleeved them and put them in these top loaders back in 2007. So these these are fresh out of a, a box that I was going through. I'm going through some stuff right now looking for old cards that I have that may have appreciated in value. And I found these and thought, you know, maybe YouTube would appreciate these. <laughs> so I remember these two Yetis were from like the Snow Peak Ruins, I think or around thereabouts. And then there's Princess Agatha. Now she's kind of a, she has a little bit of a following these days, uh, especially with Hyrule Warriors that came out a couple of years ago. She's a playable character in that and she can attack you with her bugs and stuff. I mean, she's just a pretty cool little side character. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah. Oh, here we go. So there's all the little side characters. Now we get into the dark characters. So these are the villains in the game, of course, Dark Lord, Ganondorf. I mean, that's that's one of my favorites. The Link, Ganon, and Zelda cards, I'm sure, are the most expensive from this set, uh, from the base set at least. Uh, probably pretty nice to have if you're a fan of the game. And then there's Zant. Uh, Puppet Zelda. Phantom Zant. And then, like, all the bosses from the, uh, from the temples. And there's Skull Kid. Uh, Skull Kid, of course, was first featured in, well, he was first featured in Ocarina of Time, but then he's like a pretty main character in Majora's Mask. So it's kind of nice to see like a little homage to the Skull Kid. Is that Goma or is that someone else? No. <laughs> Goma spawn there. Yeah, this kind of looks like the, the little thing from uh, The Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars, like the thing that's on the Millennium Falcon, I swear. Uh... Yeah, there's a dark nut. Yeah. Then what is his name? Dengoro. Mad Goron right there. And then Beast Ganon. Dark Beast Ganon. <laughs> Some other things. There's a big tick. There's that monkey with the red butt that runs around and hits you with the boomerang. Kind of a super random boss. And then after the dark characters here, you get into the items and weapons and stuff, which I find pretty interesting that they did that. Gale Boomerang, the Hillian Shield, the Hero's Bow, the Master Sword. I mean, I bet you that that one's probably worth a little bit. So you, you could get like a little set with the three main characters and, and like his 
armor, the, the sword and shield and stuff, and have a nice nine pocket page display for these Zelda cards, if, if you were so inclined to do so. Berry in a bottle. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So let's see, after, after that, these are the, this completes, you know, your rupee bag and this thing, complete the, uh, the 50 card set, and then you jump to a special subset. It was a 20, 27 card foil subset. We'll go ahead and put this here. Pull these out. <clears throat> so, you've got a 27 card foil subset. And the weird thing about this set is that they're kind of like action cards. So snowboard, uh, snowboard surfing, like they're, they all focus on action or, uh, or just weird little scenes in the game. Thief, that thing's yelling at you, you know, the wolf's howl. I mean, they're, they're really nice looking foil cards. They, they've held up pretty well over the years considering it's 2021. I'd say these are these held up pretty well like this. Riding Epona, that one's really nice. Exploring Link's house. I mean I'm sure some of these are are collectible. Probably desirable. Some others probably not like that. I can't imagine that being worth much. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Tips for fishing. Um What's that one? Bugs for Agatha. So that that's another one that might have some some fan popularity, given her given her the bugs. Yeah, there's you get your get your bomb bag or whatever the heck that is. That's cool. Wounded Midna. It's nice artwork. Yeah, Xant and Midna. Seeking help from Zelda. So yeah, you could probably round out that nine pocket page with one or two of these types of foils and it would look look great. Again, uh, Bulletville, I think they're the guys who, who shot you out of the cannon. That's like their warp mechanism in the game. They were one of them. Bridge repair donations. That's kind of like uh, Animal Crossing. <laughs> you can see how Nintendo borrows certain ideas from their other games. I mean, why not when you have such a vast history of games and great games at that? That is pretty, right? Mirror of the Twilight Guardians. That it may not show up on camera, but that is probably one of the nicest foils that I've come across so far. That looks great. And then I think you can see me there. Hey! <laughs> uh, this is cool. Master of the Hidden Skills. So this is actually, um, one of the fan theories is, uh, I don't know if Nintendo's confirmed it at this point or not, but one of the fan theories was that this is actually the spirit of Link from uh, Majora's Mask. So some theorize that for Twilight Princess, it's basically where Link goes back into the past after Ocarina of Time, and then the whole storyline of uh, Majora's Mask takes place. And then this is that version of Link, uh, deceased, and he's teaching the new Link the skills. Um, and there's there's some pretty cool evidence to back that up. I think that the game game theorist has a, has a pretty interesting video on that that I saw a while ago. If you want to check it out, if you're a fan of the the series, it's pretty pretty good watch if you haven't seen it already. Uh, Zant's Fury. What does that say? The Way of Sumo. That's <laughs> pretty sweet. Dark Beast uh, emerges. That is nice too. So some of these are pretty pretty good. Some you can leave, but some are some are nice. Like I'd leave that. Like who you know? What's this? Light Spirit of Guidance. That's pretty good too. And the last one here is the Death Sword Rises. So there's the 27 subset. That's every foil. So. Um, from the subset, from the silver subset. Then there was an extra rare subset, of which I only pulled one card. And this is by far and away my favorite card, <laughs> as you can see here, Dark Lord Ganondorf in gold version. This card is stunning. Um, I even put it in a little screw down case when I was younger, so you can tell I really liked it, still really like it. It's in pack mint condition. 
I'm going to do a little research and see if PSA grades these cards. And if they do, this card is definitely getting sent in. Uh, I'm probably going to have to send it in standard because I looked it up on eBay before making this video, and there's only two available on eBay. And they're around 200 bucks for the raw version, so it still packs a punch in collectability. And there's nine of these uh, in total in the gold subset, but I think that their pull rate was like one in every six boxes. Um, don't quote me on that, but from, from memory at least, it's like one in every six boxes you get one of these gold cards. And even at that time, they were selling for around $50 a piece. So they've, they've appreciated, they've tripled in value. I'm sure that there are some that are worth less, but Ganondorf is definitely a heavy hitter. I'm sure Link is as well. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. A little bit of a random one for today. Um, for any Zelda fans out there, if you like what you saw, um, definitely give the video a like. Um, feel free to uh, subscribe as well. I'm going to have tons of random content like this, as well as PSA submission videos and reveal videos for PSA and other um, topic-related videos for the collectibles and especially cards, since that's my true passion and hobby, but I, I dabble in a lot of different collectibles. So if you like it, um, definitely subscribe, and I hope to see you back soon.